I want to welcome everyone. I'm just so delighted that you've tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni. And you know, we have a number of new people with us today, so if you're listening for the first time, All About Alumni is our platform that showcases Hawthorne graduates to be able to share their post-grad activities and accomplishments. The many ways they're using their Hawthorne education and their practices is really nothing short of amazing. We have a variety of nationally accredited degree and certificate programs at Hawthorne. Some of them are for people that are pursuing a clinical track with the goal of working directly with clients. There's other programs that are dedicated to people that are seeking to primarily educate, such as write books, develop courses, workshops, programs, public speaking, teach for a school. And then there's additional programs for those who simply want to learn valuable, credible information in a conducive environment. The success of our students is a testament to Hawthorne's mission and principles to provide quality, affordable, holistic health and nutrition education. That's why we all love to learn more at Hawthorne. I'm your host, Paula Bartholomew. I'm one of the founders of Hawthorne, and it's truly such a privilege for me to be able to speak with and feature our graduates. So let's get started. Today we're featuring Maria Tabone. She's a author and graduate from our Master of Science in Health and Nutrition Education program. And Maria is going to discuss how she finds focus and passion in creating a holistic practice. And she's going to share her journey of self-awareness, learning and educating others while creating a health practice and juggling a full-time job at that. She'll also discuss why she chose Hawthorne after already obtaining a master's degree in health and healing, along with many other certifications. And her mission is combining ancient wisdom with modern science to help clients understand the importance of taking care of the body, mind, and spirit. She believes education is a lifelong journey that never ends, and that the best practitioners are those who have compassion and willingness to listen to their client, to guide them to health and healing. Okay, well, I have the pleasure of interviewing Maria. Those of you that are attending live also have the opportunity to ask her questions directly. So please don't hold back. Simply post a question or a comment to the question panel. And we're recording this and it'll be posted to our website. You'll find it in archived webinars. All right, that's enough. Hello, Maria. I'm really excited to be here together. Hi, Paula. Thank you so much. It's wonderful Absolutely. to be here with you. Well, it's really my pleasure to introduce you and have you share your postgrad activities. So let me tell others a little bit more about you. Maria is the founder of Holistic Root LLC. She is a holistic nutritionist, certified Ayurvedic practitioner, certified holistic health coach and nutrition educator, clinical aromatherapist, registered yoga teacher, healing foods chef and author. She has a master's of arts degree in integrative health and healing from the Graduate Institute, Master of Science degree in Health and Nutrition Education, a certificate in plant-based nutrition from Cornell University, as well as certifications in various healing practices such as herbalism, reflexology, Reiki, and chakra balancing. She's also the Western Price Foundation chapter leader for Summit, New Jersey, and Maria's first book is entitled The Holistic Route to Managing Anxiety. Maria specializes in nutrition and wellness consulting for many conditions such as anxiety, autoimmune, metabolic syndrome, thyroid issues, weight management, and she has Hashimoto's um, thyroid disease herself and helps clients manage this condition through diet and lifestyle. Her offices are in New Jersey and New York City, and I'm just so thrilled and pleased that you've joined us to hear Maria's journey. Maria, are you ready to share it? I am ready. I'm excited about this. All right, let's start with, um, I think it's a good place to start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, well, I, uh, as you mentioned, I live in New Jersey. I work in New York City. I've been working full time in New York for 20 plus years, 25 plus years. Um, I work for a company right now. I'm working for an agriculture company called OCP. It is uh, our, our headquarters is in Morocco and the company produces phosphate fertilizer, which is a natural resource there. Um, and the company also has a university which is engaged in economic and human, human development in Africa. So it was really, you know, aligned with my beliefs. They're doing such great work in Africa surrounding food insecurity and helping farmers. Um, but before that, I spent my entire career until this job in media and entertainment. So when I came to this job, I was a bit out of my element, but I decided, you know, to take the leap. 
uh, thinking that I'd be able to use my experience in education, you know, to transition maybe to a different role. Um, you know, my passion really is working with people in underserved communities and food deserts to really educate and be a resource for them for nutrition. You know, we've seen so much recently with the social justice movement and that all of these issues are so much more nuanced than they appear. You know, and food insecurity is no different. Um, we can teach people how to eat and shop, but you know, first we really need to maybe need to lift them out of poverty so they can have the means to help create a better life. So it's really a multi-pronged approach. Um, and I've really been digging much deeper into this as all of it you know, relates to nutrition. So I really consider myself you know, a seeker and someone who will never stop learning. Um, I don't think any of us should stop you know, as science and life is ever evolving. Um, I've been studying various uh, wisdom traditions and faiths such as Buddhism and Hinduism with traditional Chinese medicine, Sufism, and um, even Islamic culture. My company is Muslim and it's really been a great joy to learn about the culture, you know, everything from, you know, nutrition. Um, it, it's, so it's been wonderful. And, you know, my belief is that if we expose our children to all different faiths and uh, belief systems at a very young age, that, you know, we can really understand each other better. And just understanding each other through food and how we eat and how we've grown up. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been an exciting journey thus far. Beautiful, really beautiful start to this. Well, what started you on this journey of, of health and healing? Yeah, so, you know, I, uh, over 20, 25 years ago now, I developed anxiety. It was, came from job stress. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. Um, I had an, an abusive supervisor, no, no other way to put it. At that time, um, my mother was suffering with um, late stage pancreatic cancer. And all of a sudden, I started developing these hives. I was working at MTV at the time. And so they, these hives literally were the size of hamburgers. They, they were that big and round. And then my lip, my upper lip started to swell out of nowhere. So I had just, I hadn't been living in Jersey that long. My, I'm from New York City originally. My doctor was there. But I went to a doctor in New Jersey. And basically, he said to me, you know what? It's probably some anxiety. Here's some meds. At the time, it was Paxil. And, um, you know, that really didn't feel right to me because I'm like, what? Why am I feeling like this? I never had this before. So he said, well, you know what? Just take them. Everybody else in New Jersey's on them. So just take them. So that was his advice. So that was the end of him. <laughs> and I decided to go back to my doctor in New York who had more of an Eastern philosophy. And he knew my family, knew my mother. And so, um, and it was interesting. And he sat me down, he took some blood tests and then called me and I went back and he sat me down and he said, you know, your mother is going to die. That is just a fact of life. And clearly she's at the end of her life. And you can't do anything about that. You can grieve and work through that process of healing. But this job thing, you have to make a decision he said, because this is this is anxiety. Anxiety can wreak havoc on the body. It had there is so because I was getting dizzy and I, I couldn't imagine that I didn't have some horrible disease. And so um, I actually took his advice and I started. He said, you know, get into a yoga class, do some meditation. He's like, I can give you the the, the pills. I give them to people that need them and want them. But he said, you don't. I know you, you don't seem like that's the answer for you. And so um, I, I started researching everything I could. I took his advice. I went to a yoga class. I dabbled in yoga prior and did meditation and then started getting into aromatherapy, which I really, you know, that was my first love in starting this journey and Reiki and energy healing. And I did all of these things and they all played a part in my healing. And it was amazing because I got through it. Um, the last time I ever had a hive or a um, uh, or my lip swell was actually the day of my mother's funeral, and I that was you know again 25 25 years ago, and it's never happened since. But all of this played such a part of my healing, and I realized that what I had been going through at work was a gift. I left that job. I loved the company. I loved MTV. I was actually there for 17 years. I went to another department. Um, and as a result, you know, 
I, I moved on and my boss there introduced me to my husband. So, you know, I guess everything happens for a reason. Um, but in that journey too, I started researching like, hmm, China, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda. And I, I wanted to research the pancreas because I thought my mother was such a strong woman. How could this happen to, to her? Like never sick, never had a cold and all of a sudden boom. And I found out through uh, traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, that the pancreas is the organ of responsibility. And I thought, well, you know, how could that be? But then I realized, you know, my father passed away very suddenly from a massive heart attack when he was 54. My mother was the same age, young. Um, my sister has been disabled from birth and my mother at the time was taking care of a sick parent. And then I realized, okay, the seat of responsibility, that's the pancreas. I thought, okay, that makes sense. There must be some connection here. So I was off and running. That like the education and the studying and the research just started from there. And it, all of it really taught me how to look at life and how our bodies um, you know, react to emotions and thoughts and how also important it is what you eat because what you eat contributes to are you anxious? Because when I was anxiety, ha having anxiety at that job and when my mother was sick, I was eating more sweets, you know, more, more carbs, more comfort foods that weren't necessarily, obviously not the best things for me. So, um, you know, that really brought me, that really brought me on the journey to all of this and I've never looked back. Wow, amazing. You know, it just, <laughs> that you got a, house, a really great husband out of it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right? That were benefits. <laughs> Absolutely, all along the way. Well, I see that you have two master's degrees, so let's elaborate on that a little bit more. Sure. Um, so really, all my certifications are the reason that I have two master's degrees. Um, you know, I really, and you, you can see from this list that I put up, that it was really, I couldn't define myself because I wanted to learn everything about anything holistic, alternative, integrative. Um, so I needed really, you know, more focus. And I realized that I wanted to do this lifelong. So I thought, okay, um, I started with this and then I wanted more. And so I went on my, had my first, did my first degree, which was an integrative health and healing. And that was great. It was a wonderful experience. Honestly, to be transparent, I put no thought into it whatsoever. I had read about the school, read about the program, and thought, wow, every weekend for two years, we spent, for instance, one weekend on um, homeopathy, so we had an expert, another weekend on aromatherapy, another weekend on nutrition, um, healing. It, it, so that was a wonderful experience. And out of that, um, was I did my thesis on anxiety. Um, and what I had learned through my own personal experience and through my coursework. So, you know, life has a real synchronicity to it. And, and you know, so one thing just led to another. Um, and the good thing about that was it was a positive experience. So it developed into my first book, which I self-published, uh, which is a real feeling of accomplishment on managing anxiety. And again, this was not only from my coursework, but from my own personal experience and how I had really healed myself of uh, that condition, um, you know, and I knew from doing, from I was teaching, started teaching at the time and meeting with clients for aromatherapy, that anxiety is a such a widespread problem for so many people. And I think it's more, people are more comfortable talking about it now, but then they weren't. It was kind of an in the closet issue. It was, it was like almost a stigma if you had anxiety, similar to what, you know, people uh, experience with depression. So, yeah. so that, so writing this book came out of that, that, that education. Isn't it interesting when you ask somebody how they are and they say, oh, I'm so stressed. And then it's okay right. to say stressed and agree that you're stressed too and everybody's so stressed, but that anxiety has the stigma. Absolutely. So different. Well, eventually you, you got led to Hawthorne. So talk about that and your choice with Hawthorne. Sure. So um, before, um, you know, coming to Hawthorne, as you had mentioned, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune thyroid condition. Um, you know, while I had studied nutrition and uh, health, you know, for years, there was still so much more to learn, and there's always more to learn. Um, and so I dove in, and I wanted to learn everything I could about 
you know, thyroid and autoimmune disease. And I think, you know, there's a shift as a practitioner when you have something, when you're experiencing it, simply because you can maybe look at a client or even a friend and notice the signs in someone earlier, uh, which has happened to me in my practice. I've suggested to a handful of my clients, get your thyroid antibodies tested. You know, after years of these symptoms, you know, their thyroid may have been off, but nobody tested their antibodies. And that's been one of my passions is to help people with, you know, Hashimoto's through, um, you know, through diet, which is a huge part of the healing. But um, I had, for me, I was coming home from work. I work, as I mentioned, in New York City. I live in New Jersey, so I take the train home. And what happened was I came up the stairs from the train, and then all of a sudden, I couldn't get up the stairs. I was so wow. fatigued. Now, this, mind you, was building, but I wasn't paying attention. And so I said to my husband when I got in the car, I said, I think I need to go to the emergency room. So um, I went there. They took bloods. They said, well, your TSH is high. You know, see an endocrinologist. Don't worry. It's common. Common. I felt like I was going to die, you know. So after that, I went to a total of 10 doctors. Now, you know, this all became part of the research. But I was looking for answers. And in fairness, alternative and, you know, conventional uh, physicians I went to, conventional doctors, and I'm not meaning to knock them, but they had mostly the same mantra. Here's the level of thyroxine. Here's the medication. You're on this for the rest of your life. Good luck. <laughs> there was no mention of what are you eating, nothing. Um, integrative, holistic doctors, they weren't against medication, and I'm not either because I, I, I've taken medication. Um, but they prescribed an arsenal of supplements, um, some of which I took and helped. But it was costing me 500 a month. And, I, and I've spoken to a lot of clients about this. And, you know, this is, this is an issue I filed away uh, in the back of my brain to be addressed later. You know, that we, um, with the holistic paradigm, you know, because I think we have to be open and honest, even though we adhere to a certain ideology. Um, you know, about that it's expensive every month to be buying $500 a month worth of supplements. The other thing they said was to get off gluten. Um, I had had digestive problems my entire life and had, you know, spoken to it, to my doctors about it, but no one addressed it. So holistic practitioners um, also recommended probiotics, which were very helpful. But then a friend recommended a book by Dr. Liz Lipsky called digestive wellness. That's right. And I started research, researching Dr. Lipsky, uh, which led me to Hawthorne. So when I looked at the curriculum, you know, it, it clicked immediately. I mean, I knew that I found the school for a reason, you know, and it was just a variety of reasons. I mean, I had, I had done my due diligence. I looked at a lot of schools. I even looked at Columbia's nutrition program because I have um, a friend that did that program. And I had her come on the Hawthorne site with me. And I said, you know, what do you think? Because I'm kind of, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out where I want to go. And she said, you know, Columbia is a great education. She wasn't knocking it. But she said, for what you want to do, this um, this program looks amazing. She said, I would do this program. She's like, if, if I knew about this program before, I would have done this because what I learned was straight nutrition, you know, out of the FDA pyramid. And she said, I ended up working in doctor's offices and hospitals, but then would start making some suggestions. She said, probably along the lines of what Hawthorne is teaching you. And it didn't always go over well. So she said, so she decided to leave. I mean, she has a wonderful business, very successful business now where she teaches clients about health and she's also a chef. So it works out really well. Mm -hmm. um, but I spoke to Hawthorne graduates. I mean, school was really great at letting me talk to graduates. And I realized that this was aligned. It was a perfect storm. It was aligned with my Eastern philosophy that I had always uh, believed in. Um, Hawthorne brought together, you know, what I'd always known to be true innately about digestion and nutrition and how lifestyle matters, right? Not only from years of studying these Eastern philosophies like Ayurveda, uh, Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, but my own experience as well. Um, Hawthorne doesn't preach one way or the other. And then that term bio-individuality, I mean, that is it in a nutshell. Um, you know, Eastern traditions have had that same approach which have been time tested for thousands of years. And now here is a school that is 
it's like handed to me on a silver platter. Um, you know, I, the faculty is amazing. Um, so, and then there was a master's degree program. So it's not only the credibility in the superior education, it's also showing you another way to think about health. And I think this program for me, it kind of opens the worldview about health, which not only makes you a better practitioner, but a better healer and just, you know, in general, a healthier person. Um, and thanks to really programs like Hawthorne and the movement started, you know, in this community that we now we have data and proof that nutrition is just vital to everything in our life, you know, because good nutrition means good health, which really leads to a fuller, happier life. So for me, I personally felt that a certification for me wasn't enough to bring my practice and career to the next level. Um, I'd already been an Ayurveda practitioner, have a pra had a practice, and I wanted to be able to work with clients and their doctors. Now, doctors then weren't open, and this may even five or so years ago, they really weren't open to working with like health and nutrition coaches, but they are now. Yeah. So I have many friends that have certifications and they work in um, functional medicine doctor's offices. They they uh, collaborate with chiropractors. So it, it has changed, you know, thankfully. Um, so for me, having the master's degree made the difference in, in terms of credibility. You know, I work with clients and their doctors. And of course, my other goal is to transition out of my day job and do this full time, which I am uh, working towards. So. Right. That's a good goal. It's a lofty goal. I really appreciated you bringing up the point about critical thinking. Is um, there's no dogma, you know, at Hawthorne. You'll be presented right. with, a, with a variety of different perspectives that you have to think through. It's like, is there only one right way for everybody? No. So, yes, you have, there's no just a, here's the protocol, here's the plan, here's what everybody eats. It's very individualized. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, once inside, you know, Hawthorne and doing your studies, um, how did Hawthorne help you find focus? Yeah, so, I mean, the program was so inspiring to me just in terms of what you can do with your degree. And, you know, it provides also a framework for when you graduate, which is some ways, in some ways is the most difficult. Um, yeah. I reached out to alumni to, dis you know, just to discuss this very subject, which cemented my decision to attend because they were doing such interesting things. And the beauty of what they were doing is they were creating these niche businesses for themselves. And I think that's very important now nowadays because there are a lot of people out there doing maybe similar things, but um, but with this education, I think that the, the possibilities are endless to just create what whatever you want. So I really. I loved what I was learning, so that really excited me further to want to help other people with this. And it, it also it fit in nicely with all my other credentials because of the holistic approach. Um, because when I now you know of course I meet with a client to discuss nutrition, it's not just about what they're eating. And and this is what we learned Hawthorne too through the program. It's also about stress management. It's also about how much moving and exercising, your life goals, all these other things come into play. And that is, you know, that's my Ayurvedic training as well. Um, and it's part of the initial assessment. And I think, you know, when I when I meet with people and I I talk to them about nutrition, it's they, a lot of them say this is the first time that anyone's asked me about other aspects of my life. Right. So I think that's gratifying. And that was really, you know, Hawthorne really brought that all together. Like, yeah, this is, this could be really exciting. It should be really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now. Well, let's talk, let's get into a little bit about the services and sure. um, talk about how you can, expand on your business and what services you offer, that'd be really helpful. Sure. Um, so I do consultations and various things. Of course, nutrition is number one. And nutrition is really the, the basis of everything because, you know, everybody I see, it is amazing how people, you know, we think, we assume that people know so much about nutrition until you sit down with them. And it's through no fault of their own. It's just, you know, what they're taking in uh, from wherever they're getting it. Um, but I offer that, and then I also offer Ayurveda consultations, and of course, a lot of Ayurveda is similar. It's about nutrition and lifestyle, and again, same as Hawthorne. If, you know, you have five people that you're treating that are just, say, have cancer or recovering from cancer, you wouldn't give those five people the same exact treatment. 
So that's that's really the basis of Ayurveda that we we all are born with a different constitution, and um, and that's also what I learned at Hawthorne. Like we have to look at each person as an individual. So um, I do consultations there. I do private or group yoga instruction. Uh, the same for cooking, uh, teaching people you know how to take these take all this nutrition information and actually put it on the plate. Um, I do I aromatherapy. His was like, I think I mentioned before, is my first love. It was the first thing I studied. So I do aromatherapy consultations. I do oil blending. And also, um, because I'm a chapter leader through uh, Western Price, I do, I talk to people about the Western Price um, uh, theories on nutrition. And then I do a lot of teaching. I love teaching, actually. So I, these are just a few of the topics that I teach. You know, what should I eat? It's always People say that to me, okay, tell me what to eat. So, um, and then anxiety, of course, talk about anxiety and mm -hmm. uh, based on my book. And of course there are things in my book I'd like to update, um, you know, so I'll give classes on that, uh, just updating on, on new, new, um, new um, areas of, of anxiety, new research. Then Ayurveda 101, just to give them a primer on Ayurveda, also managing autoimmune disease, thyroid disease. And then in the winter, I do, you know, discovering your herbal pharmacy, start that in the fall. And Weston Price, um, I speak at farmer events and then hold my quarterly meetings about nutrition and the Weston Price philosophy. And I do that at, I am part of a faculty in New York City for Ayurveda's world, and I teach there. And then uh, there's a university here in Jersey, I've taught at Whole Foods, I teach at a yoga studio. But now, of course, we're doing Zoom classes, that's changing, and you know, I did private homes before, but that is also changing. Hopefully we'll be able to get back to that. And even libraries, you know, local libraries. Um, in addition to that, I contribute to other blogs. Um, these are so, just some of the publications I've written for. Um, and the last one is the Huffington Post. I've submitted an article to the Huffington Post, so my fingers are crossed uh, they'll that, love they, it. that they'll accept it. <laughs> and also I have products. So uh, my aromatherapy, I make, I blend all kinds of, I do custom blends, but I also have just some basic blends, one for anxiety. You know, you have to be careful that you're not saying you can cure or heal anything, but just something that's in your toolbox, whether it's if you're feeling depressed or down, we have oils that are very uplifting and the same thing with anxiety, we have calming, I have calming oils, I blend, I do some body scrubs, I do um, like a cosmetic oil for the face because you know we put 600 chemicals as women a day on our skin. And so everything is being absorbed into the skin. So I think it's really important that whatever you're putting on your body be be natural, be, you know, no chemicals, um, no toxins. And then I also sell CBD. And the reason I do that is I have recommended it to a lot of clients, but I, brand matters. And even with essential oils, brands are so important. You can get CBD in your local 7-Eleven, but is, what, what is it? And in many cases, they've found out that it's not CBD at all. So this is a brand that I researched extensive, extensively. Um, I know a doctor and the owner of our local health food store here who researched it for two years before he carried it. So I, it's a brand I believe in, and um, it's been very helpful to a lot of my clients if they wanna just need a little something for anxiety. Or, um, in some cases they use it for inflammation, but you know that's a different story because you have to use a lot more of it. But and then what I'd like to do, what I've been developing, I've always made my own elderberry syrup and my own herbal tinctures. I have a bunch of herbs in my garden right now, and some of them are actually steeping in my kitchen cabinets. Uh, but with that, I have, I'm have i just waiting for a specific product insurance, because if you're putting anything out there that people are going to ingest, you have to make sure that you have proper insurance for that. Absolutely. And yeah, an elderberry syrup, syrup around here anyway has been very difficult to find with COVID. So right. I thought I'd make an organic version. Fabulous. Well, I'm yeah. really pleased that you brought up the piece about insurance and how important that is in this situation. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, the point about we don't we don't use the word cure. Um, 
um, or even you know treatment for that matter you've mm -hmm. got different qualifications that, that that support that but from with your we don't diagnose we don't treat we don't cure we don't manage um, we support health so it's not we're managing diseases as much as supporting their health and their recovery it's very you know, it depends so much on state laws and things of how we can practice what we can say and things like that so just a couple qualifiers on that and I wondered about you know doing the um, when you go into homes that you're not mm -hmm. able to do that right now but if you were able to do it um, on a on, on a zoom or FaceTime if FaceTime somebody could be walking around in their house walking around in their kitchen showing you what's in their pantry and right. having a conversation like that that may be helpful or taking their phone into a grocery store and you can do the grocery store tour with them by guiding them through on their phone. Just a couple thoughts. That's that's actually a great idea. I've never thought about them that taking them, you know, taking their phone to the grocery store because I've done that with you know people right. just in person we to go down the aisle. So that's great. Right. Thank you, Paula. You can, <laughs> we have the technology. Let's let's use it. We have to be let's use it, right. Right. We have to be inventive this time yes. of year. Well, you, you've done so much, Maria. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit and, and share with our listeners any advice from your successes and challenges that might be helpful. Of course. So, you know, I, I don't believe in really mistakes. I think all these mistakes are just learning experiences. You know, they feel like mistakes, but they really do help your progress. Um, and I'll just touch on, you know, three quick things. I mean, at first I had followed advice. I should say at first I felt pressure to have multiple social media accounts to promote my business. And, you know, with a full-time job, I couldn't really keep all of that up. And I realized that what I love is interacting with people. And even on Zoom, I'm enjoying it because you're interacting with people. Um, but I wasn't enjoying keeping up with all that social media and providing, producing content. And so I closed some of the accounts and I decided to just focus locally. Um, you know, I live in Jersey and I work and teach in New York City. So I have a wide network. Um, and that's real, that change for me has been so gratifying. As a result, I've built a client base, a bigger client base and an amazing community um, and have clients from around the country, you know, for, through referrals. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, don't limit yourself to what the norm is. I think social media is in, extremely important um, and especially now to reach people, but don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. You know, if you want to follow you, your own drummer, find your own niche. I mean, I think, and, and things will emerge from there because don't forget, this is something you love to do and you want to share it, but you don't want it to feel like a chore. Um, and then there was something else about, oh, oh, a successful businesswoman had said to me once, she goes, you know, do what you're good at. Spend money wisely to farm out what you're not good at, but need to grow your business. Mm -hmm. And at first I took everything on myself because it is a matter of money, you know, sure. um, it's risk. But then I realized that, you know, the website, uh, renting, uh, renting space, joining organizations, all these things you have to spend money on. But it's okay to delegate certain tasks to really leave more time for yourself to focus on the other stuff. You know, being realistic, um, building a business takes time. Just in learning to really enjoy that process. Um, and, you know, finding those resources because you do need money, like I said, to build this business. Um, so I think it's worth it to spend where if you're going to spend money, spend it to make your life a little bit easier. And the last thing is knowing your worth uh, that I've spoken to a lot of practitioners about this. And it's it, it's a similar thread, you know, not knowing your worth. Never want I never wanted to charge anyone. Friends of mine have said, oh, my goodness, me either. It makes me so uncomfortable to charge friends. I've gotten much better at it. I still have a little ways to go, but it's okay to charge for your services. You've worked long and hard. You've studied hard to get here, and you're providing a service and information that's so desperately needed, I mean, especially now. Yeah. So I had started charging like $85 for a session for a consult, but then after some research, I raised it to 100 for um, nutrition and for Ayurveda, same thing, which is still moderate, by the way. Um, I know there are practitioners that, require payment up front for three sessions. It, it's, it's, you know, I don't do that. It, that works for many people and I'm not against it. But um, for me, I feel like come to me, if you come to me once and you like the service I provide and you, you get value out of that, you'll come back to me for a second to follow up. Um, and then I, I also offer a sliding scale for people because I do want to help people that can't afford 
um, you know, can't afford the full price. So sometimes what I'll say to them is, well, you know what, if you can get five people and it'll be $20 each and um, we'll have a class. So that'll kind of make it work out for both people instead of not charging them. Because I also think you make people uncomfortable if you don't charge them. So. Yeah, such good points here. Um, uh, you know, early on in my career, I also offered a sliding scale, and I soon realized that everybody asked for the sliding scale, even the most wealthy, especially the most wealthy. And yes. so I changed it to um, a barter system, and I didn't put out on my uh, in my literature that I did sliding scale or bartered. I just when there was a situation, I I offered it, but having them provide something that's of value to them that's not monetary was a beautiful exchange they felt good about it i felt good about it so there's many ways to handle the money and and demographics matter so much too about where where we live and what's affordable what's practical for somebody to be able to pay but just just beautiful suggestions and advice here really um lessons well learned you can tell to be able to to provide <laughs> yes. this information so, so thank you so much <laughs> um, what about moving forward now what's next what um what, what can you do from here so um you know i'm basically I'm, I'm building can you're always continually building so i've just revamped my website i think you know it's really important continually developing a community um you know joining organizations um you know uh blogging contributing to other websites speaking on panels teaching i think these are all things that really are useful to do you know to, and now developing zoom class and partnering with other practitioners you know know your fellow practitioners they're great resources and you can really you know help one another um i think these are all uh really useful ways they've really worked for me um just in my business and and moving forward um and then i think really important is joining organizations where you can network that has been so helpful, but it's also been a great experience. I work with um, farmers in Pennsylvania and the Amish community as a liaison, helping them bring nutrient dense food uh, direct to consumer. And it's, you know, it's very strange how a situation like COVID, which is a horrible time in, in our country, but it's really been helping these farmers. They were close to bankruptcy, a lot of them before, and now they're bringing food direct to consumer. Everybody wants That's everything right. delivered. So it's really been great for, uh, really great for these farms. Um, and, and, you know, it's really an opportunity to, in, in addition to doing something good and positive, it's really an opportunity to network. Um, you meet a lot of people through this too, and you just don't know, you know, what your next chance encounter will bring you. Um, so now I'm now gonna be, I'm now contributing to a newsletter for a farmer, and that also has hundreds of members, because these are all membership clubs. So, you know, one thing leads to another. Um, and, you know, my hope uh, post COVID is that with, you know, some of the highest risk factors for COVID being diabetes and obesity, that this discussion will be more focused on nutrition and its connection, you know, to the immune system. Um, you know, for me, future goals, uh, I'm working on a new book uh, called Herbal Kitchen. That's a working title. I'm working on my uh, podcast with a a uh, doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, and we're going to work on a YouTube channel, and also working partnering with one of the farmers uh, to host a YouTube show on nutrition and health. I'm hoping to leave my current career and really teach nutrition and health full time. I'd love to teach in a high school or college to really change some. You know, I think it's foundational. We all know that the younger you learn about this stuff, the better, yeah. and the more yeah. success you'll have going forward. Um, and just, I'd like to also develop some programs in underserved communities. I've also, I've already had some preliminary conversations with the local YWCA to really educate on the importance of nutrition, you know, cooking, growing a garden, and how to eat healthy on a budget, really to help people, to meet people where they're at financially, um, yes. I think is really important. So those are really my goals, you know, for the future to, to broaden this out. And I'm really excited about it. I'm excited for you to leave your job and do this full time. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's 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 amazing all that you're doing with a full-time job so you know an appropriate title for the presentation <laughs> absolutely <laughs> now we have a sense of um of a little bit of your life and your and your daily activities it's powerful um Thank you. Yeah, it's I think when you have a passion for something um, and and, you know, again, my, my education at Hawthorne has really pushed me further. Um, it, it accelerated everything. So I, I really am grateful for that. Well, great for you as a graduate, too. There's there's reasons to want to stay in touch with you, Maria. How, how can people do that? Oh, um, yes, I just there's my email. And my website, you know, I encourage people to, you know, reach out to me anytime for anything. Happy to uh, answer any questions or have a conversation. Beautiful um, offer there too. Thank you so much. You know, it's really been a pleasure, Maria. You're 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 so genuine in your in your sharing, and so passionate about all of it. It's, it's really a pleasure to be able to speak with you today and just take it all in. So I hope you'll visit us again at Hawthorne and to continue to share your good works. There's going to be abundance of them, I can tell. Oh, thank you, Paul. It's been such a pleasure to be with you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We have a few questions if you have a little bit of time. Sure. Have you noticed in working with clients with anxiety, a, connect, a connection with shallow breathing? and possible health issues from this. Yes, um, I, I've, you mean in, in the way they breathe. So we don't breathe right, you know, that's one thing that we, we I teach with yoga and, um, and meditation. Uh, most people, their breathing is very shallow. So, mm -hmm. and in, in India and in Ayurveda, they say oxygen is the gift of life. Like oxygen, if you're properly oxygenated, you can heal just about anything. And so it's very important, I tell people, to start every day with three deep breaths into the nose and expand that belly and hold it for maybe five counts and then release it through the nose. If you're not comfortable releasing it through the nose, you can release it through the mouth. But if you do that every day, and twice a day is really optimal, morning and evening, it's also very calming. It, it'll help anxiety whenever anyone's starting to feel an anxiety attack or that coming on, immediately start your breathing um, and do three deep breaths and just you know sit there quietly. Um, but I, I do notice that in so many people and absolutely everyone I've seen that has anxiety needs to be really right. retrained how to breathe. I think we all need to be retrained how to breathe. Yeah. Um, to, like, like we did as babies, you know, you watch a baby breathe and a whole little abdomen comes up and down. There's just yeah. full inhalation and exhalation, such ease. But there's actually um, some great research that has just come out that addresses this exactly about shallow breathing, contributing to anxiety and many other health conditions. But certainly anxiety, you know, is the top of the list with something like this. And especially nowadays, I mean, I'm seeing more anxiety than I've ever seen before, just with yeah. people trying to cope with, as we all know, what's happening, um, you know, being isolated. So it's an important time, but it's an opportunity that we're home. I tell yeah. people it's an opportunity to do these things because you're in your home and you can really focus and be more mindful of them. Imagine the possibilities, right? Yes. Right. But, you know, it is an anxious time. There's a great deal of uncertainty yes. for, for people. So it's 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 an, it's an even more of an anxious time than, than usual. So just thank you so much for the work that you're doing. There's another question of of why you chose the MH&E program and not MSHN, the more clinical program at Hawthorne. Yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, I think I... I had this idea to do this program and then go on to the doctorate. I, I was going to bring that up. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, all right, well, let me get all of this in, and then I'll I'll go on to the doctorate. So that's my plan. Excellent. You deserve a doctorate. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> too. You, you'll wear it well. Absolutely. You know, and and it fits in with your lifelong learning. Yes, you know, it absolutely. doesn't it seem like the obvious next step. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm looking All forward right. to it. 
I am too. I'm uh, I'm going to follow this carefully and and have you back and tell everybody about it. All right. Um, I think that's the end of the questions. That's all that I have for now. So. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to remember that we do these All About Alumni on the first Wednesday of the month. And our next one will be Wednesday, September 2nd, back here at 12 noon Pacific time. We'll be live with our next graduate from one of our unique training programs. So I hope you'll join us for that. And I'll remind you that we recorded this. And if you know of anybody that would benefit from listening to this presentation, please share it. We've had so many other previous excellent presentations. They're all in our archived webinars, so I encourage you to explore those and view their presentations too. Until we get to meet again, I want to wish you all the best of health and to take good care. It sure matters so much now. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.